Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and good night. Um, we're here tonight to um, celebrate the life of our um, dear evangelist Delreed Cahoon. Praise be to God. And we are thanking God for his goodness and his mercies. We thank God for all of you who are here tonight. Those who are viewing online, we want to thank God because we know that he is a keeper and he will continue to keep the family, praise the Lord, all those that mourn in the name of Jesus. And we're not going to keep you too long tonight because tomorrow is um, an early day, an early start, and we want to get into a program that I have in front of us. And um, we're just going to sing our congregational hymn, and we're going to start with, Oh, I want to see him to look upon his face. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we, um, sorry, before we, with the mask on, I can't really see everyone. Praise the Lord. So forgive me if I don't see you. But I'm going to go in the order of the program tonight. And we're going to open up in prayer with um, Pastor Vera Stewart. She's going to come and she's going to pray the opening prayer. Then we'll continue with the program in Jesus' name. glory to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory great things he continues to do I say that because we trust him I say that we can trust him we just we trust his decision making we trust the way that he does things we trust it we don't understand it but we trust him so to God be the glory Great things he continues to do. Bow your heads with me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this time that you have drawn us together. You have allowed us to look up. You have allowed us to recognize that the time on earth is limited. You have allowed us to know that there is a checkout time. And the biggest message that is in this room lies before us. The biggest microphone that is in this room lies before us. The biggest testimony that is in this room lies before us. And Father, the Most High King, as we come to celebrate the life of Evangelist Cahoon, as we come to celebrate the work, as we come to celebrate the mantle that she's extended to us, that somebody's got to pick it up. As, as we come to recognize what God has done in her life, for each and every year, and each and every person she witnessed to, each and every person she came in contact to. Here we are, Lord, weak, humble, but knowing that you are in full control. Bless the proceedings of this service, every aspect, every tribute, every song, the moderator, all that is to be done to your glory, to your honor, we come to you, Lord Jesus. In everything, we give thanks. And everything we give praise. And everything we honor you. Bless you this day and this hour. Just give us strength, Lord Jesus. Give us strength to stay standing, to stay holding on, to stay abounded in thee. These are all blessings I ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we sing our congregational hymn, I just wanted to... Um, say, you know, I have a few words to say, but I don't want to say too much, is that we're here and we're celebrating the life of our mother. But she was also a worshiper. She was also a worshiper. So we're going to worship today. When we sing the, the, sing the songs of Zion, we're just going to sing, you know, in her memory. Because, you know, she used to sit right around here somewhere 
And she, she always, she always worshiped. So as, as children of God and what we believe, praise be to God, is that we come into his house to worship God. And although we mourn and although we sa- we're sad, you know, there's two things going on right here. We're going to sing the songs of Zion to uplift our souls and to uplift the family. We don't want it to be too sad. It's already sad, but we don't want it to be too sad. We want to sing the songs of Zion. So we're going to sing our congregational hymn, um, tonight, oh, I want to see him. It's in your program. So just open your program, sing along with us, and worship the King of Kings, worship the Lord of Lords. This is what our mother, our sister would want in Jesus' name. As I journey through the land, singing as, as I go, pointing souls, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow.
for Sister Calhoun tonight. Whatever we're doing, we're doing it in our honor and in our memory. Because like I said, she was a worshiper. So we're gonna follow in our footsteps and worship her God, her King, her way maker. Hallelujah. Praise be to God, praise be to God. At this time, coming to us with the first scripture reading, praise the Lord, with a scripture reading is Brother Trevor Cox, her church son, in Jesus' name. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Praise God. Tonight's lesson, our first lesson will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be it that being clothed we be found, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in heaven, in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Nine and ending. Wherefore we labor that we may, excuse me, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Aaron did the reading of God's holy word in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I do give honor to God who's the head of my life to this tonight. I thank God for his goodness, as I said earlier. I thank him for his love. I want to greet our pastor and bishop, Bishop E.R. Thomas, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pra Come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm going to say that again. We're going to greet our pastor and bishop, Bishop E.R. Thomas, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. This is who um, Evangelist Calhoun worked so closely with. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Like a right hand for him. So we give God thanks. Praise the Lord for our pastor. We have his lovely wife. Evangelist Marcia Thomas, in the name of Jesus, praise be to God. And I just want to greet also, you heard her with the opening prayer, Pastor Vera Stewart. Lord, praise be to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for her and for anyone who I've missed who is clergy, ministers, um, everyone. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise be to God. I, you know, just before we go into the rest of the program, I wanted to also offer my condolences to the family of the Cahoons. And like many of you, you know, we've known her, I've known her for um, a very long time, but I think it's the past 18 years that I've actually worshipped in the same building, praise the Lord, under the same pastor as her, praise be to God. And I was reading a scripture um, today, and I talked about in Proverbs, a virtuous woman. And I took a couple of verses from that, and I'd just like to share that with you before we move on. Like I said, I'm not going to do a lot of talking, praise the Lord, because we want to finish by around nine o'clock. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And I'm skipping some verses. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Talking about her husband. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. 
30th verse, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. And that's why we're here tonight. She feared the Lord. She was a beautiful woman. Beautiful woman, beautiful woman. If you see all the pictures of her in her younger days, my God, I thought about Brother Cahoon and I said, my goodness, praise be to God. He just held on to her and she held on to him because you know what? Um, I'm sure there was many things that happened. Sickness came, but she held on to her marital vows in sickness and in health. And it, it taught me that whatever I faced in marriage, in life, I can look upon Sister Cahoon and say, this is a person that I want to, to pattern after because she stood by her husband. She stood by, you know, Andra. She stood by the church. She was a virtuous woman of God and her price is far above rubies. And no matter her beauty, the, the, the scripture said, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. And she wasn't a vain person. When I looked at those pictures, I'm like, my God, she was so hot and beautiful. But you never saw her being um, a narcissist. You know, she, you never saw her. I don't even think she realized how beautiful a person she was on the inside as well as on the outside. So we're here tonight just to celebrate her. Praise the Lord. She was a passionate and a no-nonsense person. Praise the Lord. She, she was passionate because she loved the people of God. She loved her family and she loved her church. No nonsense because she was not afraid to voice her opinion in love and with a smile. I'm so glad that I got to know her. And I'm so glad that I, you know, even in our sickness and before, I would tell her that I loved her. Praise be to God. And she reciprocated. Praise be to God. And this is my sister, my friend in Christ that we come tonight to celebrate. And I want all of you just to remember her. Praise be to God. The kind of woman she was. The kind of woman that, you know, left this earth. Praise be to God. And we've can, we can pattern. There's so many things we can pattern after her. But to God be the glory. We read the scripture. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And she's somewhere with her Savior. She's in the arms of her sweet deliverer. And we are here just to rejoice with her. She's not sick anymore. She's not in pain anymore. Her sister Jackie said, she has been healed. Right? She has, maybe not the way we wanted it, but she has been healed. She is with her Savior, her creator, her maker, in the name of Jesus. So we're going to continue to worship. Praise be to God. And we're going to go into some tributes tonight. Like I said, I do have a program. And um, I see, saw that he came in. We're going to have Elder Charles Bernard. He's a friend to Mother Cahoon. And he's going to come at this time and give his tribute in Jesus' name. And we are practicing social distancing, so we are going to wipe, <laughs> praise the Lord, mics and rastrums, so just be patient with us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. When I see Jesus, Amen. Then all my troubles will be over. Oh, when I see Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, God bless you sir. Amen. And I, told, I know where time is against us, so I'm just going to greet everyone tonight. God bless you. Good to have you here, Brother Cahoon. Amen. So the hand here, God bless you. I'm going to make it really short short as I can. 
<clears throat> I met Sister Cohen. It shows here that I'm a friend, but I need to correct that. She was my sister. She was my big sister. And I'll explain real bri bri briefly to you. I met her in 89, I think it was, January. And I went to live with them shortly after that, maybe the same month or the following month. I went to live with Brother Cohen, just a Cahoon. And she was a true big sister to me. My first bank account, she opened it for me. Before they went to work in the morning, they would drop me off. She would make sure she asked me, over, oh, did you eat? Are you hungry? Did you have breakfast? She was being a big sister every way. Even when it was time to get married, she was there with me all the way. And then she came, became my son's godmother. Brothers and sisters, it hurts. And I tell you, I wasn't looking forward to this. I wasn't looking forward to this. It took me a while to get here because I wasn't looking forward to it. But, but when I went to look for my sister, she called me real quickly. She called me, Sister Andrea called me. She said, can you call Brother Cahoon? Mom wanted to talk to you. And when I spoke to her real briefly, she said, hi, brother. I said, hi, sis. I could feel the weakness in her. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm on my way from work. She said, drive safely. And I love you. Those were her last words to me. But when I went to look for her this Saturday before she passed, I realized she wanted to say something. A few of us in the room, she wanted to say something, but she could not verbalize it. But if I could just let my imagination run wild just for, just for a second, she would have been saying the same song, singing the same song I just sung. When I see Jesus, amen. If my imagination could run wild just for a little bit, she'd be saying, Bishop, I've got a feeling in my heart that the best is yet to come. Brother Cohen, I'm here with you, my brother. Sister Andrea, all the way. God bless you, saints. Be encouraged and be strong. Those that die in Christ have got a hope. Blessed are the dead. God bless you, moderator, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Coming to us at this time will be Sister Charmaine Jackson Hewitt, niece, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Giving God honor and praise today for his grace and mercy. I greet Bishop Thomas. I call you Bishop Thomas. Um, Thomas, in the name of Jesus. This tribute is on behalf of me and my mother. It is with heartful sympathy that we are sharing this tribute to Deacon Cahoon, my son, to Andrea, family members, the rest tabernacle family members, friends, and to the entire congregation. We rejoice in this day that the Lord has made for today and let us rejoice in it and be glad. Today seems to be a day that is sad, but for us Christians, it is a glorious day because we know that Evangelist Cahoon was a child of God. Auntie Lulu, Del, Lulu, we are here today because we love her. We love you, Brother Cahoon, my son, Andrea. We have known her. We have known her to be a true child of God, a Christian, someone that we can look to. And today, because of the life that she lives, we can have comfort and assurance knowing that she is with the Lord. So continue to look unto Jesus for everything. Continue to rest on his shoulder because we know that in the end you will see her again in Jesus' name. I can hear Sister Cahoon saying, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry, I've answered the master's call. Jesus took my heavy load. Come on. Now I'm on the glory road. I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Oh, she's not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Yeah. 
hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So she's not sorry, hallelujah. We might be a little sad and we might be mourning the family. Praise be to God. But we're here, like I said before, to support you and to hold up your hand as you, as you mourn. Because we mourn along with you. But she's not sorry that one day she answered the master's call. At this time, we're going to have another tribute. And coming to us at this time is Minister Harold Wilkinson in Jesus' name. and the precious life that has gone on before us. I believe tonight that we are here for one special reason, and I will just do it now and just say, God, you're good at all times. I want to say tonight that my deepest sympathy goes for the Cohen's family. And I believe that God is in control of every situation that comes among men. I can say tonight that it's a reminder to us that one of these fine days, we are going to be like Mother Kahun. But we got to make our calling and election sure. Without him tonight, we would be perishing. But because of the love of God, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believe upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so there everlasting life awaiting us but my dear sister has gone into eternity. And I want to warn everyone tonight that eternity is too long to be wrong. If you are wrong, you better get right with God. This is man appointment, and this is one that you cannot shun or remove. It will have to come to pass. And I would like to say, this is my fourth funeral service I have been for the past four weeks. And every time I get into the house and see someone lying in the coffin to remind me that it's important for man to live righteous, denying himself from the lusts of the flesh, and really... And remember that the appointment is at hand. We heard tonight that I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And here, Sister Coon, she did walk in the land of the living. To show forth the love to the living. And now she's gone. We're going to show forth the love of God. If God was so inferent to give his life for us. 
that we could redeem from our sinful nature and make our light right with him. Just get right with God, and God will always bless us when we get into eternity. God bless you all, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have two family tributes, and we're going to ask you to use the mic down there. Praise be to God. We're going to have come into us, and excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, Liso Edwards, grandniece, and right after um, her, we're going to have John Scott and Kingsley Scott, brothers-in-law of Evangelist Cahoon, in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. tribute to Antivator, of course. Uh, a writer once said that contrary to commonplace opinion, people do realize the good times are good before the good times are gone. There are moments in time when people understand the preciousness of that moment and etch it into their hearts as a memory they will look back on. You've no doubt felt this too. It's like a feeling of nostalgia, but not nostalgia for things that have already passed, Rather, it is nostalgia for things that you experience at the precise time that you are experiencing them. I am not an orator, but so I will be brief. Uh, for, my very first crisp, for my very first winter in Canada, Auntie Lulu, um, without making any fuss at all, uh, packed a comforter for me. It was... I've been grateful for it because it has kept me warm in winter days. Um, it has been and will be cherished. Thank you. John Scott and Kingsley Scott. Praise the Lord. Brothers-in-law. Give them a clap as they come in Jesus' name. The heavenly clear, the glory of God, and the firm and ensure it is on the work. Day unto day address speech, night unto night, show it knowledge. Well, Adele, I have known her all my life. She never changes. It only gets better. Day by day, minutes by minutes, hour by hour, months by months, years by years, it only gets better. And there's one thing I can say. If she doesn't go to heaven, I don't think anybody in here will ever enter heaven. I grieve for her death, but I'm not sad because I know that she is at a better place than where she was before. And I'm telling my brother, you are being blessed, right? And continue to serve God because she has made that one special for you. I couldn't have done what she have done. No one else I think could have done what she have done and bear the burden and tribulation that she has been to for you. So I give God the glory for her. Thank you. A good talker, just like my brother, but I cannot say this. 
We are friends who meet on the road of life. Such as we have known. Turn aside where the road is rough. And leave us the journey alone. But the friend who is true. And who knows us true. Will stand by us. To the end. With a friendly smile. And I know my sister-in-law was that. She was not a friend. She was family. And when we came to Canada. We wanted to go back home. It was too hard. But she made it possible. For us. With food. With clothes. With encouragement. And allow us even to know brothers and sisters of this organization. So, as my brother say, he say, mark a perfect man. No, I will say, mark this perfect woman. And that's all I got to say. She was this perfect human being. And if there's another one that they make like that, I would like to meet her. <laughs> Thank you. Redemption cometh, praise the Lord. What a wonderful feeling, glory to his name. I'm out of the bondage, I'm into the freedom, by the blood of Jesus, praise the Lord. Redemption cometh, praise the Lord. Sweet.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No more in bondage, no longer bound. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But she's free at last, hallelujah. No more sickness holding her down, she's free at last. Hallelujah, hallelujah be to God, praise be to God. Praise be to God, our presiding bishop. Praise the Lord, Bishop Walter G. McCoy from Inglewood, New Jersey is here with us tonight and we just thank God for him. Praise the Lord. We also have Bishop Nunes and wife in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. We have Elder, Elder Farkinson and saints from Brantford. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God. You know, people have traveled far and near just to honor this woman of God, this precious woman of God. Praise the Lord. So let us just, you know, just, just worship God for her. Praise be to God. You know, I was on the line last night and it was such a beautiful service. Praise be to God. It was so wonderful. We were on there for about three hours. And I'm sure we could have been on there for a lot longer. There's so much to say about Evangelist Cahoon. But you know, time, time constraints, so we can't go there tonight. But also this morning, um, we also had another um, homegoing celebration for one of our mothers, Mother Ina Grant. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, a wonderful woman of God. And today she was here like... This morning, I was also watching while I was working at home, and the saints are just going, I don't know if you know this, but there is a, I don't know, there's something going on in the ear. God is calling his children home. Oh my God, my God, there is a, a, a there's going to be a, just a worshiping, and, 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 and there's going to be something happening Praise the Lord. And we have just got to um, just lock into it. As children of God, we know why we're here. We know what we do and we know why we're doing it. Praise the Lord. Sister Cahoon made her calling and she made her election very sure. So we've got to be sure that our ankle holds and grips the solid rock. I see evangelists. Sharon Mailer, she keeps moving all over the place. Sister Ev Evangelist Sharon Mailer from Massachusetts in the house. There's also Evangelist Diane Hector from the Bronx. Praise the Lord. She's in the house. Praise be to God. Is that Sister Joan? <laughs> Sister Joan, praise the Lord. Morris in the house from New Jersey. Praise be to God. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that a blessing? In this pandemic, praise the Lord, we have people traveling over the airways and driving just to come to a going home service of one of the saints. That's a blessing in Jesus' name. We're going to carry on with our tributes, praise the Lord. And at this time, we've got coming to us, praise the Lord, evangelist Diane Hector, She's our international woman president of Church of Jesus Christ International. She's from the Bronx, New York. After evangelist Hector, we're going to have missionary Joan Morris from Patterson, New Jersey. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Giving honor to the Spirit of God. I'm truly blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And this is a celebration of life. You know, um, when we have life, we, we do what we do. And we give God thanks today. First and foremost, let me greet the Spirit of the Lord and also our presiding bishop, our host bishop, Bishop Thomas, his beautiful wife, giving God thanks for being here on behalf of my church, um, CJC Bronx, uh, Pastor Bishop Bent, and my husband. Actually, today's his birthday. So I'm here, and I am just giving God thanks that I had the opportunity to be here so that we can offer and add our condolences 
to the family and Sister Andrea Deacon Calhoun, we give God thanks for you. We continue to worship and magnify the Lord. And also on behalf of our International Women's Ministry, Evangelist Calhoun was a great woman of God. And as women, we embraced that and we had to come. Myself and Sister Joan had to come and also Evangelist Nicole just to say how much we appreciated having her as a part of our women's ministry. And the scripture in Titus says that she was a pattern of good works. And, and, and that's what we are grateful for. Sometimes we as women will do and do, but when we are a pattern of good works that someone can look and emulate, somebody can see our life and just know that this is what God intended us to be. So today we magnify the Lord and we give God thanks. And I love the scripture that says, Death is swallowed up in victory. Come on, church. Death is swallowed up in victory. And for that, we have hope in Christ. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Greetings, everyone, and praise the Lord. Praise God. Greetings to um, Bishop Thomas, our presiding bishop, and to the bereaved family, Deacon Cahoon, Sister Andra, and all the family, Rest Tabernacle, I, Mama T, as I call Evangelist Thomas. I greet everyone in the name of Jesus. I do bring condolences from my family, the Morrises, also my sisters, Jennifer and Janet, my parents, Elder and Evangelist Coke, and also my pastor, Bishop Hibbert, Evangelist Hibbert, and our church in CJC Passaic, they do send their condolences to the Cahoon's family. Sister Cahoon was definitely a uh, supporter of our church as well, and she was also a very dear friend to me personally, and I just bless God for her. I thank her for her life. I thank her even through her sickness, just how she kept me in a brace and a, in touch of what was going on with her, but always positive, always positive. And I, when I told my children that she passed away, it was like, oh man, she's come to the house all the time. So I was also graced and blessed to have her in my home at times when she would visit Patterson. And just to, to, her smile, the laughter that she had on her, just jovial and, and, and everything. I enjoyed the time going shopping. That was one of the adventures when she came to Patterson was to team up with Evangelist Johnson and the whole crew of them to go to Irvington, to Orange, and always buying shopping and always shopping for clothes and shoes. I don't, I didn't get it, you know, but I remember one occasion she was shopping for a wedding, bought a beautiful pair of shoes, and of course she gets home and it's two different foot, not two different size. So, of course, to her, you know, she's seeing when she calls, she says, well, blessed Jesus, hear this now. Sister Kuhn, I think that was September of that year. Sister Kuhn literally waited until the following year of convocation, brought the shoes back, and I'm saying to myself, oh my God, are they going to really take this thing? But she was determined, had her receipts, and Sister Angela shared with me that she kept every single receipt. She came back with her receipt, and she went back down there, and they sure enough, they gave her a brand new pair of shoes. But I'm just so happy. I'm just so glad for the life that she lived, and just always in touch with me. When I'm not feeling well, she's telling me to take it easy. I'm like, you need to take it easy. And just even working as admins in my church, and admin here at rest, we always sometimes collaborate on things she'll ask me questions. What do you think? What do you do? How do you do this? How do you do that? But I'm so happy and I definitely could not have missed it. My, my hope and my prayer was actually to see her before she passed away. And I kept on saying, as soon as you get home, let me know. I'm ready to come. I'm ready to come. I'm ready to come. And I remember sending her the text at the con as before convention. I said, soon as convocation is over, I am driving up to Canada because by then the borders are open. Evangelist Thomas always kept me abreast of what was going on. 
what God would have. And so I think I, I probably should have said to her when she got home physically to let me know, not when you go home to heaven, but I was, <laughs> I'm just so happy for her. Um, a life well lived. So I, I miss her, but I can't be sad because it is joyous occasion. The angels are rejoicing. The loved ones that have gone before, they are rejoicing. And so we rejoice. May God bless you. I love you all. You're always in my prayers and my thoughts. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, coming to us, praise the Lord, um, we're going to have a musical um, selection. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the chorale. I, I, I really can't say that word, but <laughs> praise the Lord. They're going to come to us. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. So just Worship with them as they come and sing in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll just sing tonight.
Jesus. It is well, it is well, it is well. Without a, doubt, a shadow of a doubt, you may be seated. It is well with Sister Cahoon's soul. She has run well. She kept the faith. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Passionate for the Lord. A woman of no mean order. My God. Like I said before, a no-nonsense person who kept the faith and held on to what she believed in to the very end. To the very end. Isn't that wonderful? To the very end. She started her race. A lot of us start. Praise the Lord. It's really not how you start, but it's how you finish the race. Praise be to God. And she finished well. She finished with Jesus. She finished with her master. And we can say it is well. It is well with her soul in the name of Jesus. So we're winding down. We do have, I have a slightly different program than you, so I'm not really out of the way. <laughs> Praise be to God. I have a slightly different program and I'm kind of following it to the best of my ability. Praise the Lord. Trying to see who is here. Praise be to God. And right now, um, I'm going to have uh, Evangelist Anita Bryan to come to us with a selection. We, do gonna we are going to have a uh, an open mic session, 15 to 20 minutes later, praise be to God. And we do have a preacher. We do have a sermon, praise the Lord. And we're still trying to get, a, get out of here by at least nine o'clock or so. Very ambitious, right? But we're going to do that. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Pray, I know you're sad. <laughs> praise be to God. But Sister Cahoon would want us to worship God. She would want us to praise God. She would, she would be jumping up and down and hollering and just giving God the praise. Hallelujah. So that's what we're going to do on her behalf tonight. She can't do it right now, but we're going to do it for her in Jesus' name. So right now coming to us is Evangelist Anita Bryan with a selection in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. In the dark of the midnight, as I often hid my face, when the storm haunts about me and there's no hiding place midst the crash. Of the thunder, precious Lord, hear our cry, keep us safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over.
keep us safe hallelujah while the storm passes by thank you thank you thank you praise the lord we're going to continue in our, with our tributes and at this time coming to us is missionary kareen lawson a friend um, in jesus name she's going to come and give her tribute in jesus name welcome her as she comes in jesus name Giving God thanks to be here tonight, um, greeting our bishops, saints, family, friends, um, my condolences to the Cajon's family. Um, Sister Cajon is not um, dead family, but Sister Cajon is family. Um, so my little piece that I wrote, and I write it because um, I just want to remember a few little points. Um, so. Um, these are just my reflections on my family in regards to Sister Cajon. Um, Sister Cajon um, was part of our family, part of the Brackett's family. And as I wrote this, honestly, um, I was getting emotional, okay? Um, because I was just reflecting on her. Um, every celebration we had, the Cajons were there. Uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, we celebrated together. So we were family. For me, Sister Cajon is extremely respectful. She's humble. She's a gentle soul. Beautiful spirit. Calm. Sweet. Caring. Loving. Diligent in her steps. Modest. Loves dressing up and dressing for the occasion. Sister Cajon loves people. Sister Cajon loves the church. Sister Cajon loves God. Sister Cajon loves knowledge. Sister Cajon loves her family. I don't know her family, but sometimes I feel like I know them. Sister Cajon would talk about, sometimes I don't even know where she gets the time from. Most older people are not connecting that much with younger, but Sister Cajon connects with her, her siblings. She connects with um, all the nieces and nephews. She's always telling me stories about what this one is doing and what that one is doing. And it's just amazing the way she's able to connect with people. Um, I'm a driver, and Sister Cajon was like my driving partner. Um, to lots of events. We traveled to Bible College at Pastor Nunes. We traveled to a lot of um, church services throughout G GTA. We traveled to lots of services in the States, internationally, well, in the States. Um, we also took a training years gone by. I don't even remember how long ago it was, but it was a training at the Distress Center because um, in regards to um, Sister Cahoon, she needs to connect with people, even those in, in distress. So therefore, Sister Cohen figures she needs a training so she can manage that well. That was very important to her. Just a few events. Traveling to church in the GTA. If we have Brother Cahoon, as I said, just my reflection. If we have Brother Cahoon on the trip, Brother Cahoon will be asking the first question on our way to church. So are we stopping at Tim Horton at the church? <laughs> Sister Cahoon will be asking, why are we talking about um, Tim Horton when we haven't even gotten to church? But Brother Cahoon loves Tim Horton. And so this is a joy. I'm always planning shopping after Bible class. We did Bible studies for quite a few years at Pastor Nunes. And of course, it's a joy always need to catch a store. So I'm like Sister Cahoon. We need to go to the store when church is done, when, when Bible class is done. The moment we say that, I'm like Sister Cahoon, we need to go. No time to socialize. Let's just get going. And she would just simply tell the class. Sister Lawson, she always called me Sister Lawson, or Madame. She says, Sister Lawson is trying to catch a store before it closed, as normal. Yes, we're always rushing. Poor me. I'm always rushing. Poor Sister Cahoon, because she, you know how dainty she is? Take her beautiful strides. I'm rushing. I'm, I'm in a race, so she's trying to keep up with me. We are oftentimes leaving church services, and um, sometimes we're traveling far, Oats Harbor or wherever. And a lot of times, Sister Cohen and I are going together. And of course, um, I'm always running late to pick up my husband, Wayne. So Sister Cohen, of course, is in the van for us rushing to get Brother Wayne before it's too late. And then we're also always either dropping off Alexia from to somewhere, picking up Alexia. And Alexia always has special requests. So Sister Cohen, of course, is a lot of times in the van with Alexia with our demands. So Sister Cohen, sometimes said, you're such a silly girl in her beautiful tone. 
she was always so sweet when I called Alexia. Um, so when I called Alexia and told her, I'm so sorry, that's just a coon past. Sorry, I'm trying to reflect the best I can without being emotional, but, um, okay. Um, um, I would call um, Sister Cahoon at times, and I remember there was a couple of times I called Sister Cahoon, and she said to me, oh, I'm so tired. And I'm like, well, why are you tired? She would say, well, your pastor, not her pastor, but your pastor, have me up from day till night, and I've been out all day, and I'm tired. And I'm wondering, why is it not because Pastor have your all days, my pastor, not yours? But that's with Sister Cahoon. But she did it in love. She loves her pastor with a passion. She loves her church with a passion. And she would do any and almost everything that she can, she will. She was truly a phenomenal woman. She never gives up on anyone. Oftentimes, I said, Lexia, Sister Cahoon's always asking to pray for you. And even though Lexia has gone her way, Sister Cohen is always respectfully saying, Alexia, not, not even Alexia, Sister Alexia. How is Sister Alexia doing? Always encouraging and always caring about not just Alexia, but anyone, brother, sister. She does not give up on you. She's not a person who gives up on you easily. Though you may have gone your way, she's claiming you back by still saying, sister or brother. I will truly miss her. And just in closing, my husband, um, Wayne, his two words are a woman of virtue, a woman of kindness. And he reflects on Proverbs 31 and verse 26. You can read that. But a woman of virtue, a woman of kindness. Um, Sister Cahoon truly has been an amazing friend. I love her. Our family love her. And I'm truly going to miss um, our traveling together, all the things we've done together, and all our celebrations. I'm, I'm truly going to miss her. May God bless you, family be strengthened, and just know that we're always, always here for you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, a woman of virtue. Praise be to God. We thank you all for your tributes that have gone thus far. We're winding down, and we're going to have, we're gonna have an, some open tributes. Um, between, I'm going to say, 15 minutes of open tributes. I think I've covered every, everyone in the program. And you can use the mic. I think it's there. I can't see it right there. And um, this is for anyone who wants to come up and pay your tributes to, um, to the family um, in regards to Evangelist Cahoon. So we're going to give you about 15 minutes at this time. Praise the Lord for anyone who would like to come up. Don't be shy. Praise the Lord. I'm tired of staying down here. I'm tired of troubles and trials. I want to go to heaven and rest. the Lord of greetings in the most exalted name of Jesus Christ. I want to greet Bishop Thomas. God bless you in Jesus name. The Kaun family, please accept my condolence and God bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Brother Bernard. So 
Tonight, I must say I'm indeed happy to be a part of the, the Count Van Lester when going home service. She might leave in us now, 2021, but there is a time for Lindsay is coming. It might not be in 2021. I was here today and I was saying to my wife when I got home, I give God thanks for Mother um, Grant. I have never in the company of someone lived for 95 years. That's a blessing. I can see where tonight it's a very, very bitter and sweet for rest to be um, sending home these two wonderful women of Zion. So tonight, brethren, I'm happy to be here. I miss you all. I used to Sister Kawun, Evangelist Kawun from Innis Avenue. I remember when I got there, I want to make it quick, 1994, 1984, Sister Joy Lawson invited me there at um, Innis Avenue, and I fell in love with the people of God, and I stayed there up until now, almost 40 years. What I'm saying, my, um, Innis Avenue, Bible Way, slash my father's house, I'm still a part of the Brian legacy, and here is a part of the Brian legacy. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, another tribute. We're going to have about two more, praise the Lord, we're watching the time, praise the Lord. Anybody else with a tribute? Praise the Lord, praise him. Sister Shanae. Praise him. she heard that the baby cried um, and you know I was just there and she would call every day she would text me like how are you how's your husband how's the baby and she would do that over and over again and I remember the last time we were talking with her um, she was like you know I always have to think that is so sweet just kind of sweet to her she was so special and she said this is how my mom husband and I tried to ask her how she was and she turned back she was like how are you and I'm like she's so caring like she's always thinking of others so in a little six years I knew her she's like the most caring human being I've ever met she's like literally always always she doesn't know my husband because he came in December COVID hit in March so you know we were away from church then I got pregnant COVID was still here we weren't coming to church baby was born early off from church and she was literally every time we spoke 
how is your husband? How is baby? She only saw, you know, a few pictures of my baby because I made sure I sent them to her because she was always checking on me. And I just want to um, say condolence to the Kawun's family. May her soul rest in peace and pray you find strength. Andrea, you're in my prayers, you know, because I went through, I went through, I went through. So God bless you all and keep strong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was Sister Cahoon. Praise the Lord. Even in her sickness, she was inquiring about everybody else. Praise be to God. So we have one last. Oh, and the pilot will be my Jesus. The Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise, praise be to God. God. I can hear Sister Cahoon saying, Don't weep. Don't weep because I'm going to a place up in the sky. Praise be to God. But first, I must greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Bishops, greetings in Jesus Christ's name. My condolence to the Cahoon family. Um, on behalf of Branford, we're just saying, you know. One thing I can say I'm going to remember about Sister Cahoon. You know, I know we traveled with her to the state before, and it was a hoot just traveling with her. She always has something in her bag to give you. If you're hungry, look in Sister Cahoon bag, you know, when we are traveling. And I just want to say I'm going to miss her when convention's time here at Rest Tabernacle, and she running around trying to get you to pay your, your money for your, you know, convention, like your, your, your convention fee. fee. Right, right. She's always running around your convention fee, giving you your envelope, you know. I'm going to miss that because I'm going to miss not seeing her running around doing that. You know, and I, I'm telling you, we're going to miss her in Brantford because she's always there. She never missed one service in Brantford. She's always there. So on behalf of us, we just want to say our condolence again. Thank you, thank you. So we've come to the end of our tributes at this time. Before the speaker comes, I'd just like to make um, some announcements because, you know, you might run out afterwards. Um, to, right after service, there will be refreshments that will be served outside. So we ask that you take yourselves outside. We're still social, social distancing. We have to clean for tomorrow. So if you cannot congregate, congregate inside the sanctuary, do that outside. Also tomorrow, there will be viewing at 9 to 10 a.m. for the funeral service tomorrow. Service begins at 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And those for those who will be in attendance, please allow sufficient time to do your COVID-19 pre-screening. And I know probably a lot of people that's here tonight will not be here tomorrow. So for those who are viewing online, please come early so that you can have your pre-screening done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank you all for your um, participation tonight. Praise be to God. And I'm just going to ask um, our pastor to introduce our speaker for us, praise the Lord. And he's going to, and I want you all to just um, listen and just um, 
Just meditate on the word of God. Find comfort. Find solace in the word of God tonight. So I'm going to ask our pastor and bishop, Bishop E.R. Thomas, to come to us to introduce the speaker in Jesus' name. When in valley, low I look towards the mighty sting, and behold my, my Savior in leading in the fight, it under my door stretch was the valley low. I can see, I can see, and the I go. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, let us sing forever of God's saving grace. On the seat of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our past, home at last, ever to rejoice. One more time. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Here to sing forever of God's saving grace On the street of glory, let me lift my voice It is our past, home at last, ever to rejoice Hallelujah, come on somebody shout hallelujah Somebody shout glory Hallelujah Here's our pastor, home at last, ever, ever, ever to rejoice. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I just want to take this great time out. I am a handicap tonight. And for the past couple of, maybe a week now. And everybody who knows me, I like to move my two hands and my feet. Amen. But obviously, for some reason, um, I was not being careless, but I was working at my house. And I had a sledgehammer trying to break some concrete and put a big swing Miss the concrete and then the, the hammer goes with my hand. And believe you me, right now you see me standing here, you would not see the flame coming out of my hand. But I have to be strong for Sister Kong. Uh, tonight, I just want to say, if anyone could fill Sister Cahoon's shoes, it would be an angel coming down from glory. Yeah. But I won't say much because I have the preacher coming. But I just want to say to you all that we have lost, not lost, but uh, she changed her address, gone to the place where she finally should be. And tonight, I just want to say to everyone, I'm telling myself to don't cry. Because she is in the presence of the Lord. One of the things tonight I'm so happy about. Uh, Bishop Nunes and his wife is here with us tonight. Come on, put your hands together. For them. <laughs> Bishop Nunes is a true friend. Yes. A true friend. Had it not been for him, sometimes I would be laying low. But I could call him, talk with him, 
and share with him. A great man of God, his wife is the same thing. Both of them work in a great team. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And that's why they are here tonight, leaving their home, our church, to be here tonight. Then we have with us tonight our presiding bishop. I want to put your hands together for him. I know, and God knows, that this man really loved the church of Jesus Christ. Bishop McCoy. Bishop McCoy, as long as it's possible, she will, he will travel to, I can't tell you, walk on water if it's possible, to come to support the church of Jesus Christ. And I love him dearly and respect him to the highest degree. I call him and tell him that um, Francis Cahoon had passed away. And he wasn't hesitating. He said, yes, I will be there. And I am so happy tonight to see him here. Hallelujah, standing by the church tonight. Just want to say once again to our friends that comes along to support us on the disgrief. I don't know how much I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I feel my knees begins to wobble. But I pray for strength. I pray for strength. And by God's grace, I'll make it through. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I will leave Bishop McCoy to close it out for me. But at this time, I ask you to stand with me. With no further ado, a man of no mean other, one that loved the Lord, one that is a friend in the night, in the, in the dark and in the light. Wherever you are and you, he can do anything for you, he's going to do it. Receive none other than Bishop Nunes to this podium in Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. You may be seated very quickly. Uh, I'm looking at the time that's there right now, and uh, I'm going to get out here at 9 o'clock, so I'm just trying to figure out how to curtail my sermon tonight so that you can be out of here in time. Well, God bless you. I want to take this opportunity to greet um, Bishop McCoy tonight. Amen. God bless. We are, we are, we are friends, right? <laughs> Amen. He has already given me the go-ahead. Amen. And certainly to uh, Bishop Egbert Thomas tonight, uh, the pastor of this great assembly and um, a great man of God, a good friend of mine. Amen. And certainly friends stick it closer than brothers sometimes. And uh, in different areas, um, we like to worship God. Uh, first, the family of the deceased, Evangelist Delric, uh, Delric Calhoun, kindly accept condolences from Sister Nunes, amen, myself, and the Triumphant Church of Jesus Christ, and certainly the Canadian Apostolic Ministries tonight. Uh, to Bishop Egbert Thomas and First Lady Thomas and the rest of the of family that are in mourning of such a great loss, little comfort to say to the families of the deceased and to the church family, the earth loss is heaven's gain. But from a spiritual point of view, Amen. This is very true. We can say of this lovely lady, and a lot has been said about her already. Um, I don't want to go over it, but we do thank God. I have my piece to say uh, concerning her. Her close relationship grew from her being a member of the Mount Zion Apostolic Bible College at Five Greenboro Drive Campus, 
where I was the lecturer. A close-knit family, amen, we have become, right, Sister Lawson? <laughs> amen. So somebody let the cat out the back tonight. I, I couldn't always figure why there was such a hurry always to leave Bible class, but now I know folks wanted to go shopping. Amen. We want to thank uh, uh, our uh, chairperson tonight, Sister uh, Party. May God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, but, you know, um, also most queries I would ask uh, her pastor, Bishop Thomas, about, I would promptly be directed to Sister Cahoon. Speak to Sister Cahoon, she, he would normally say to us. And we do thank God for that uh, great love that she had for her church. She was the administrator for this church for years. And we want to thank God for her great faith. Amen. Her love. Her long suffering. Amen. And grace was very evident. Her family, her classmates in her class, and friends and brethren. Amen. Grew to love her very well. Tonight, I want to take a special time out to uh, greet her husband, amen, Deacon Audley Cahoon. May God bless you. We have been friends for a long time. Amen. We have known one another from uh, Innes Avenue days. Amen. And God bless you. And certainly, Andrea, God bless you. Amen. Their daughter, certainly the rest of Naka will miss her. Her memories, amen, will live on. Please, uh, I know it's late and I know it's time to go and I know that folks are not always interested in, in sermons um, at funerals, but give me a chance tonight so I can cut this thing down a little bit, amen, or most of the way and, and I'll just leave you with a word, amen, tonight. I'm glad to see every one of you, Sister Thomas, God bless you and your children and everyone tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the topic that the Lord put in my spirit, and this will interest um, all of you tonight, every one of you tonight, is that the topic would be God investment in this world. And certainly, uh, in, in studying this word, it brought home a lot of comfort to my heart. And it also elevated my spirit. Amen. Amen. To really understand what I am in God and what we are in God. Each of us in, is God's investment to this world. Life is much more than being born and dying at the very end. I was, I was here today in this service, wonderful service. Now, Bishop McCoy, I, I learned something from this service today. How, how nice it is to live to 94 as a Christian person with the hope of God, and then from here, amen, you go to a place where you have eternity in God. How much better can it really get? How much better can it get? Praise God. So we thank God tonight. So life is much more than being uh, born and dying because that's the way some people see it. What we do with, the, with this statement from the cradle to the tomb, in between both is a life that is worthy, amen, of exploring. Because we are in that present situation today. Though mankind thinks so highly of themselves, we are accountable to someone somewhere or the other. Everybody say we are accountable to somebody. We, the way we live sometimes and the way that people do things is as if that they're not accountable to anybody. But we are accountable, amen, to somebody tonight. The scripture, amen, in Romans chapter 5, verse 21, uh, uh, Romans 9, sorry, uh, verse 21 said, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So we are, we are in the hands of Almighty God. And whether we, whether we think we can escape it or not, amen, by just being, amen, obnoxious or whichever way we want to find ourselves in, we are accountable to somebody. And certainly, when we came on this earth, we were not just put here, amen, it doesn't matter, I, I, I feel like preaching here now, it doesn't matter how you get here. 
Maybe in the back of a VW, I don't know, but it doesn't matter how you get here. But you need to consider yourself that when you came on this earth, you were an investment made by God. I'll tell you something else about investment tonight. Because we have only God that blew the breath of life in us in the beginning as any tangible proof of our infancy as man. That's the only thing that we have to go on. Now, some folks may say, well, then, pastor, I believe that I come from a monkey. Well, you can come from a monkey if you want to. I didn't come from a monkey. You know, I am not evolving into something else. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. I aim to look like God. I aim to look like Jesus himself. Amen. So when he created me, he created me in his own image because he knew what he would look like. Amen. When he came as the son of almighty God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. So the scripture in Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, it was not uh, uh, an accident. It was not, amen, just come about anyway like that. This was in the mind of God. This was planned out by God. And God set up, amen, this world so that everything would be here amen when he created mankind and in and, and created them as an investment to this world well I don't know about you but I am concerned where do I go from here how do I represent God amen how do I become an investment amen to the almighty God the scripture says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female. Now, allow me to preach tonight because I, 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 I don't want to go to heaven and meet sister Cahoon and she's gonna say to me well then why didn't you preach tonight so I don't want to get myself into that position here help me here somebody I gotta preach right now sister Cahoon will be sitting on her seat and say preach pastor in the name of the Lord Jesus amen because she was a saved woman I aim to get to her tonight because she was an emblem of an investment from God and she accepted amen this investment amen that tonight we can be here and we're not saying that she's a murderer we're not saying that she's a thief Amen. We are not saying that she has been obnoxious. Amen. To those that are disenfranchised. But we are here to say good things about her. And thank God Almighty. She accepted the way of Almighty God. And that's what God expects of us tonight. Because we are an investment of God. Everybody say I am an investment of God in this earth. Uh, let me go to this quickly and God and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful amen don't you know that it's a responsible a responsibility for us to be fruitful in this earth well I tell you something I hear a lot of stuff going on around town these days and about this world where two men are shacking up together and they cannot multiply and replenish the earth uh, God in the beginning created a man amen and a woman and set it in the process amen by which we could have offsprings, amen, so that the world could be, could be propagated. I don't want to stay here tonight because I can make a lot of trouble here. But thank God Almighty and thank God that Jesus one time said to the Pharisees, he said it was not so from the very beginning because God set forth a law from the very beginning, amen, as a plan to propagate this earth, amen, after our kind. And I thank God Almighty that my offsprings are coming up to be something like me amen they'll be better than me because they're more educated but thank God Almighty their offspring will come up amen and they're going to do something greater than I am doing and the greatest path that any man can take in this world is to give their life to Jesus amen be circumspect that when you come before us amen nobody have to make up any stories nobody talk here tonight's friends and, and act as if they were making up a story they were saying what they know of this this great woman let me run down here and say for God's original investment in mankind the only separation that came was sin 
sin separates man from God. So the, 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 the having dominion over all the creation that God created, that's what God intended for mankind. Uh, multiply and replenish the earth that's what God have intended for mankind and the scripture in verse chapter two, chapter 2 verse 7 says and the Lord God formed man and the dust out of the dust of the earth of the ground and breathed into his nostril the bread of life and man became a living soul amen all that happened to sister Cahoon is that God reached out and took back the bread of life and everything stopped when the bread of life stopped don't you understand don't you know tonight, amen, that as gallivanting as we want to be, as much as we want to show off, the only thing between us and death is the breath of life that God has blown into us and God has got the power, oh, thank you, Jesus, to reach out and take that breath back from us. Amen, we can die at 20, we can die at 40, we can die at 60, and anytime God wills it to cause us home, all he has to do is to take the breath of life So what? What? When God puts us on the earth, we were an investment. What is the definition of investment? To invest is to allocate money with the expectation. Everybody say with the expectation. Of a positive benefit or a positive return in the future. In other words, to invest means owing an asset, owning an asset or an item with the goal of generating income from the investment of the appreciation of your investment, which is an increase in the value of the asset over a period of time. Well, I need to ask myself sometimes, even tonight, am I in God's investment? Am I appreciating in God? Or am I decreasing in God? Every one of us, amen, folks don't understand, amen, but the book of Romans says, hath not the potter power over the clay. We are, amen, accountable to God, amen, to our lives and the ideas of God. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, for I know, for I, for, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thought of peace and of a not of evil to give you an expected end. Come on here, somebody. It is not the will of Almighty God for us to become murderers and thieves and whoremongers and all this other stuff. It's in the mind of God for us to have an expected end. It's the mind of God that when we come on this earth, the investment that he has made to this earth, amen, bring forth, amen, fruit, bring forth, amen, life, bring forth betterment in the presence of the Lord. Then shall he call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hear, I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your hearts. Well, I, I want to say thank God Almighty for hope tonight. Because if this earth, the tabernacle be dissolved, I've got, I believe that I've got a building of God. Never mind me coming to church every Sunday. Never mind me running around this place and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. This lady was sick for many years coming to the Bible class. And I never knew she had a problem. Because she, ne she always have a smile on her face. She never grumble and she never complain. Matter of fact, I'm going to make a confession to you. I come to this church many times. I mean, I know them from before. I didn't know that Brother Cahoon was her husband. Until later on, I found out this lady was strong. This lady loved God. Even when she was going up the rough side of the mountain. Amen. She still spoke the word of God. Amen. It's told here tonight. Amen. That even when she was suffering. She was still trying to encourage other people. That's God investment in an individual. And this earth. When we can bless others. The scripture said to we should bless and not curse. Let me run this down here. 
And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Come on here somebody. We are to jump up tonight and say, God Almighty, I want to come home to God. I want to serve you, Jesus. Amen. I want to give you praise. Amen. Because we are the temple of the living God. Hath God God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Come on here, somebody. All we have to pull out our bag, amen, is God. Mankind are failing everywhere. Governments are failing everywhere. But my Jesus never fails me yet. We sing the song many times. He never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Jesus Christ never fails me yet. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know. Well, cut the short here, Sister Cahoon. As an investment to this world, through much trials, through much heartache, through her joy, through her happiness, she will find peace with God because she has been a Good investment, amen, to this world. And certainly was an example to her family and to the church and to the world at large. She accepted Jesus Christ. Well, thank you, Jesus. Because when mankind had gotten into sin and there seemed that there was no way out for us, God sent forth his only begotten son into the world so that we may be saved and we have come to accept Jesus. We are living in the, in the dispensation of grace and thank God Almighty that the road may be rough. But we have a hope in God. Even though this outer man perish, but the inner man is being renewed. Sister Cahoon, through her trials, through her heartache, through her joy, can find peace with God today because she was a good investment to this world. She kept on appreciating in God. And when she go, amen, to the white throne judgment, amen, and the book and the other books will be open, Jesus, amen, will be able to say of her, welcome thou into the joy of my salvation because she has been a great investment. She accepted Jesus as a savior. I am sure did she did God proud. As a child of God, she had fasted, prayed, served needs of her church and the community, showed piety through her love and gracefulness. Tell you what, she has been through hard times, never complained, always trusting in God. Finally, God has taken her home to be at rest. And God will be able to say she was a good investment. Can God say that about many of us tonight? Can we say that our life has been a good investment in the kingdom of God? Or is my life is just wasting away? Well, I got the antidote tonight. Accept Jesus Christ as your savior. And you will begin to live a life that God is pleased about. I'm almost finished here. Let folks... Amen. Listen, folks, you are an investment by God. What have you gained? The parable of the in investor bore it out, and I don't have time to go in that there, but he, he was going into a far country. The scripture in Matthew 25, verse 14 <clears throat> said, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. He gave one five talents, he gave one two, he gave one one. The one that had five went and traded in it, came back, amen, he gained five, amen, he was a good investment. That was a good investment, 100%. He gave one two, he came back, traded in it, and he got two more, 100%. He went and he buried it. He said, I know that thou art a hard man. You like to reap where you don't sow. So I hid your money and here is your one dollar. No interest. No investment. Where is our life tonight? Is our life an investment in God? Well, visit the scriptures. John 3, 16 to 19 says, For God so loved the world. 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world through him might become a good investment. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. Not a good investment because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is a condemnation. The light is coming to the world and men love, men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. For he that will love life. 1 Peter 3. For he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking God. Let him eschew evil, put away evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Where are you tonight? Are you a good investment? Are you a mediocre investment? Or are you like the one talent man that will dig the earth and put your money in there? And when your master come back to God, when God comes back, you will say, well, I have done nothing for this world. I have done nothing for the community. I have done nothing for anybody. It's all about me and myself. Well, you need to learn this song. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of... Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed... In the blood of the Lamb. I submit to you all tonight to repent of your sins. Baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you will begin to, you will begin to be a good investment upon this earth. Your enemies will be like your friends. Those that you hate, amen, will become like people you love. Your brethren will become a part of your society. Thanks, Sister Larson, for her testimony tonight. There is a place in God for the people of God to love one another. Folks, let me tell you something. We may see this world as everybody being bad, but in this world, there are some good people. And if you want to find them, come in church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Come to Jesus for the cleansing blood. You see them. God bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. God bless Bishop Nunes. What a word for us tonight as we celebrate the life of a servant of God. We understand that the uh, funeral directors are here to, to, to remove the body back and to bring it back tomorrow. So we're going to try to bring our service to a close. But I certainly want to thank the man of God for coming and reminding us of the investment. And I tell you, God is well pleased with his investment in Evangelist Cahoon. What a return. What a return. What a return. God bless you. I, I can't keep up time. I'll speak to you a little bit tomorrow. But you know, Evangelist Wilson advised us that her sister, uh, Judy Mullins, is back in the hospital. Let us stand to our feet, everybody, everywhere. Thank you, Bishop. Thomas asked me to just wrap this up, and I, I'm grateful. I'll greet everybody tomorrow. Is that all right? Uh, they're walking outside. I greet Mother T, everybody, everybody. But the Bishop, you know, I, I, I hate to see him with, with almost with one hand, but he, he called for his brother Nunes. 
And you know this, what a newness came dressed just like me tonight. So we, we are brothers too. There's a, so this a, it's a big set of brothers we got it. We're going to be praying for sister, uh, Judith Mullins. And at the same time, we want to continue to pray for the family. I, I'll tell you a little bit about the secret between me and Deacon Cahoon. You know, I mean, that, that's my friend. That's my friend. So I had to come. His, his wife went home, want to be with him. We're going to be asking for a special prayer for this woman of God that God will touch her in the hospital. You know, we're at a funeral and we're praying for somebody that's sick. You know, well, that one, that person died. Well, guess what? We'll pray for somebody else. Yes. And we'll keep on praying. Let's bow our heads, everybody, everywhere. Uh, the funeral director just wait a little bit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come today to say farewell to our sister and to console the family and the church family. God Almighty, we have heard the word tonight of the investment that you have made. Now we lift up Sister Judith in your hand as she's in the hospital. I know God, we're at a hospital, we're at a, we're at a house, we're at a funeral service, but we want you to reach out your hand, Lord God, one more time and Touch Sister Judith from the crown of her head to the sole of the feet. Bless the doctors and the nurses and everyone that will attend to her. Whatever is given to her will work as designed, minimum or no side effect. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, I lift up before you now the cahoons, deaconess, sisters, daughter, Lord God, everyone that's related to this great woman of God, God Almighty, help them to rejoice in the return that you have gotten from your investment in their mother, their wife. Bless her now we pray. Bless them now we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, God Almighty, remember the West Tabernacle, Bishop Thomas, his wife, Lord God, associate minister, associate pastor, every one of this church lord god as we mourn with this family bless them lift their thoughts about the suffering of this time give them a glimpse of glory in the name of jesus christ we commit all things into your care in jesus christ's name god bless you god bless you you heard the announcement before that we begin tomorrow for a week for a viewing at 10 o'clock right nine o'clock nine o'clock and the service begin at 10 so the Funeral directors can come and they can do what they have to do. God bless you. Have a safe ride home. Remember the announcement, the refreshments is on the outside. Okay, so I will walk and walk with the, the body out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus shall lead me night and day. Jesus shall lead me.